Hey folks, welcome back, Namecode here. And today I wanted to talk about something called remote functions, remote events. Now, if you've been developing on Roblox for any time, chances are you've probably come across these terms like server scripts, local scripts, server side, client side, filtering enabled, uh, and even these remote events, which we're mainly gonna be talking about today. Now, what does it all mean? And essentially what it comes down to is the server is what runs the game and the client, which is the players that are playing the game on their local computers or phones, whatever, uh, they download from the server and replicate whatever it is that's on the server. Now, up until a few years ago, whatever happened on the client was automatically replicated back on the server. So you could create a part and that would be created uh, across everyone else playing the game. Now, what changed when Roblox brought in this thing called filtering enabled is if you wanted to send a request to the server, then it was then filtered and the server checked. And if you tried to create a part, for example, it would say, no, you're not allowed to do that. So there were a lot of restrictions placed on what you could do from the local client device. Now, filtering enabled is actually a property of workspace. So if we go to workspace here and we scroll down, we'll see filtering enabled is ticked by default. Now on all new places you create, create inside studio, uh, filtering enabled will be turned on and all the games you'll play will have this enabled. You might see uh, old places that from a few years ago, um, they'll say, there'll be a little message that says the game might not function as expected. Uh, this is because the older games were created before filtering enabled came in and as it says, the games might not work correctly. I would say probably the most common type of event you're going to come across is client to server. So I've got this little place I've got set up. It's a bit like a painting game, I think. And I've got this town here. We've got a paint GUI with a button that you can click. And I've also got a paintbrush tool in the starter pack. So we'll go in and play the game. And I'll present to you a problem here, if you will. So we can click this button here to paint the town red and it'll turn all the houses in the town red. And I've also got this paintbrush tool that we can whip out. And whenever I click, it's gonna turn a random part in the town a random color. So I can keep clicking it, and I'll get a bunch of random colors up here. And I get this beautiful work of art like so. But if I click at the top here, it says I'm currently on the client, which is the player as I'm playing as, but I can switch over to the server and you'll notice that the houses are still gray. Now the game is still running, here's my character, and on the client, if we switch back, the houses are still all their jazzy colors, but on the server, the changes haven't taken effect. Now why is this? Well, the script for my GUI is a local script. You can see it here, button local script. And if you remember those filtering rules we talked about earlier, well, we're making the changes locally, but they're not going to take effect on the server. That's not allowed. If we want them to make effect on the server, we've got to use something called a remote event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a server script. I'm going to put this on the uh, server script store service area. I'm going to add in a script and I'm going to create a new event. It's going to be, um, We'll call it local uh, paint paint red event, and that will be equal to instance dot new. Uh, we'll want a remote event, and then we'll give it a name. So we'll say paint red event dot name equals, and we'll just make it the paint red event. Uh, and then finally, we need to give it a, a place. So you know, you can place things in the workspace or the server storage, but for remote events, you want them to be accessed both on the client and on the server. We store them inside the replicated storage. So we say dot parent equals game dot replicated storage as it's replicated on both the client and the server. So this is perfect. So we've created the event here. And then we need to go over to our button local script again. 
And instead of trying to make the changes inside the local script, we're going to get rid of that, control X, and we're going to paste it into a function on the server script over here. So we'll say local function paint red. And inside here, we can do the painting red. And then we are going to call this function whenever that remote event is triggered. So we can say paint red event dot on server event connect and then the name of our function which is paint red now we need a way of triggering it now so we'll go back into our local script and in here it's just a case of triggering that event so we'll start off by finding it if you can remember the name it was the paint red event so i'll we'll create a variable i'll say local paint red event equals game dot replicated storage and then seeing as we're creating it with instance.new, we're gonna use the wait for a child. So we'll just wait for a fraction and make sure it's being created uh, before trying to index it immediately. So paint red event, and then when they click, all we want to do is we want to send the message to that server. So we say paint red event, colon fire server. It's a function, so we have two brackets like that. And so whenever we're going to fire the server, so we're sending a message off using this event, and then over in the server script, uh, this event, when the, when the on server event is triggered, then it's going to call the paint red function, which is here. So we'll go ahead and test this now, shall we? We're in the game, the town is all gray, click paint town red, the houses turn red, we'll switch over to the server and the houses are also red, fantastic. And of course, I can do the same for my paintbrush script by creating a server and a local script. So if we go back and check that, you can see our paintbrush is now gonna take effect on the server as well, perfect. Now server to client communication is useful if you only want to reveal something to one player. Now you can see I've just gone ahead and created a little door here over the house. And at the moment, if you try and join the game, well, you're not going to be able to go into that house. But let's say I wanted to reveal it to an admin. So what I'd do is I'd go ahead and create a starter player script to local script. Of course, remember local scripts can only run in a few areas, such as inside the starter player or starter GUI. And we'll create a function here. We'll say local function uh, open admin door. And what this function will do is it will say workspace dot door dot transparency equals one and workspace dot door dot can collide equals false. So you'll be able to walk through it. And we only want to call this function if the player is an admin. So we'll create a script on the server now. We'll call this one admin script. And we're gonna be firing off an event just like we did last time. Now, if you remember before we were on the local script and we were firing the server, well, it's the same process, but now just in reverse. So we started off by referencing the event uh, and another way of doing it, instead of creating an instance.new, you can actually do it inside replicated storage like this. So we can click plus here and click remote event, and I can name them at the event uh, open admin door. And now inside my admin script, I can say local open admin door event equals game dot replicate storage wait for child open admin door and then all i want to do is i want to check if the player is an admin so i'll just use my id and we can get a function a little bit like that and we then we will just call this function so we'll say game dot players dot player added connect to this player added function 
So all this is going to do is whenever anyone joins the game, then it's going to check if their user ID is equal to this, which is actually the name, the ID, sorry, of gnome code, which is my character. And if it's equal to that ID, if it's the admin, then we want to fire the client. So last time we fired the server, this time we use that event and we say fire client. And the only difference is that you have to specify a player. So we're specifying uh, the player which has that user ID. And so then over in the local script, then we've got this open admin door function. And all we need to do is we need to run it whenever this event. So we'll reference this event again, copy and paste that. We can paste that in. And this time we'll say open admin door event dot and instead of saying dot on serve event, we say dot on client event connect and the name of our function open admin door. So now when we go and play, name codes loads in and you can see there's no door. So we can run into the house, no problem. And if we go and test and switch over to the server, you'll see the door is definitely still there. It's just not showing on that individual client. So we can run in and out, but another player who came along wouldn't be able to get through that door. Obviously you can see that if I went and changed the ID to add an extra number in and then went back in and played. And now I've got the door here and we definitely can't run through it. And finally, we have server to all clients. Uh, now you can use this if you want to send a message to uh, all clients, as it says, and it's mainly useful for coordinating uh, games. So what we could use an example here is I could have a GUI and let's say we wanted to show a message whenever anyone joins the game. So we'll create a GUI here and we'll add in a text label and we'll just paste this text over here, make it a bit bigger so you can see it. And we'll keep that blank for now. So we'll go to replicated storage and we'll add in another event. I prefer creating the remote events actually inside studio rather than doing it inside the script as then it makes it easier to see what you've actually got, what events you have in existence rather than trawling through scripts. So we'll call this event uh, player joined event and then over in our admin script as we called it we could have called this something else but it's currently called admin script seeing as we already have this player added event we're just going to add an extra condition to it so we've got the admin door event and we're also going to have the player joined event so we create the variable for that player joined event and that will be over there in the replicated storage. And then after you've checked if it's an admin, we'll add a new line and we'll say player joined event. And instead of saying fire client or fire server, we can say fire all clients and brackets because it's a function again. So then we can copy this line. We can go into this screen GUI we can add a local script in and inside it we'll create a variable for the player joined event. I've copied and pasted it from the other script. And then we're simply going to say create a function. We'll say local function update text. And we want to call that text whenever uh, this event. So we say player joined event dot on client event connect with the update text. Now in this example, we actually want to send some data as well. So in update text, we'll have one for player and then we will make script.parent.text equals player dot dot, which allows us to concatenate or add together two strings. And then in quotation marks has joined. So let's go back into that admin script on the server and where it says fire all clients inside those brackets, we're going to add in 
the player variable. So whichever player joins the game, we want to send uh, this. We want to send the data or the variable of that player to all the clients. So let's go ahead and try testing that. We'll click play. Ah, we got an error there. What we need to do is we need to say player dot name. We can't uh, pass the entire player object. So just the name of the player and then tell them they've joined. There we go, it says name code has joined. And it might be better to test this in a proper server. So I could open up a local server with two players, press start. And we've got player two has joined. So player one joined in first and then player two joined in afterwards. And you can see it says player two has joined along the top. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our tutorial on remote events. Hopefully you found that helpful and you can go away and create some awesome stuff with it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.